Hi guys, Sean here from StudyClex, and in this video we're going, be, we're going to be taking a look at Theorem 21. And this theorem is broken into two parts, so we're just going to take it part by part. And part 1 states that the perpendicular from the centre to a chord bisects the chord. So if we just have a circle like this, uh, what we're going to do now is just draw a chord. And to remind you what a chord is, a chord is any line which connects two points on the circumference of a circle. So for instance, uh, this line connects two points on the circumference of a circle, therefore it's a chord. And what this theorem states is that if we have uh, a line that's perpendicular to a chord which passes through the center, such as this line here, and we're also told that uh, this angle in here is 90 degrees, so uh, the line which is passing through our center is perpendicular to the chord, then what we know is that this line actually bisects the chord, meaning that uh, this distance over here is equal to the distance out the far side to the other end of the chord. And uh, just a reminder that this is due to the fact that uh, this is a perpendicular line to the chords, so this angle in here is 90 degrees, as is this one. And that's it for part one of this theorem. Part two of this theorem states that the perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center. So this is actually kind of the same thing in reverse. Uh, you could even go as far to say that uh, part two of this theorem is the converse of part one, um, although they haven't stated that here, uh, pretty much is the case. But we're just going to take a look at what that means now. So uh, here we have the same circle and we're even using the same chord, although it's not necessary uh, that we use the same chord for this to be true, but it is the exact same chord and we now have that this line is the perpendicular bisector. So we have uh, that the fact that these two lines each side are equal, each side of the chord, and this is 90 degrees in here. So what we're told is that this line, which represents the perpendicular bisector going out in this direction, it actually passes through the center. Uh, we don't actually know necessarily where the center is, but we do know that the center lies somewhere on this line. Now there is actually a handy trick uh, for finding the center, let's say if we had two chords. So imagine we had a chord joining uh, these two points here at the bottom, so I'm just going to draw two points. And now imagine we uh, bisected this chord to find the perpendicular bisector. And we found that the perpendicular bisector is this line up here now going vertically. So that means that this is a right angle. Then because of our theorem here, we know that the center of the circle lies on both of these perpendicular bisectors. However, because it has to lie, lie on both of them, it can only lie at the point on, at which they cross, which is this point in here. And that means if we have two chords and we bisect them, we can actually find the center of the circle uh, through this method which is just a handy thing to know based on part two of this theorem. But uh, that is actually it for this theorem, and I'll see you next time.